In one of his speeches, Gaspar Noe likened his films to roller coasters in parks. First, you rise with great excitement, then a rapid decline occurs. He says the cordiality of his films is the horror and suspense born in this fall. It is obvious that the vortex is a vortex where such a fall and disintegration is experienced. The sequence of lead in the film, the raptures in the intervening transitions clearly do not allow for a single moment to experience a harmonious unity. The tranquility of a completed meaning. Under normal conditions, while watching two people on a single screen, it does not allow the audience to form an opinion that complements and gives meaning to it with a higher consciousness. Perhaps the audience is also included in this tragedy of not being able to unite by adding another rift rather than on top of the two pieces. Probably because the film is so difficult, it does not allow us to relax in a meaningful totality by ignoring the gaps and crevices in life. This fragmentation in the film has such a powerful effect that is bent to the handicaps of our own universal life and our singular experiences of consciousness through these nameless persons, a woman, a man and a child. We feel that the cracks and crevices that we ignore in our own lives are gradually being crossed up with a black line, just like in the first vacuum up scene of the movie. All these dream accents, such as the movie's beginning by comparing life to a dream within a dream where the male character working on cinema and dreams are perhaps one of the deepest dimensions of the movie. It is as if the life cycle depicted with a man and a woman in the movie came to consciousness for a moment. Just like a dream, and disappeared in a whirlpool just as dreams are quickly erased from our minds. After that first awakening, the meaningful hole that comes to the mind is quickly erased from the mind, such as huge gaps and complete oblivion. We watched a downhill white pod, and it has been wheeled in an astonishing imaginary dimension, the men and women waking up from a slumber and closing their eyes, never to wake up again. It was like a dream, it appeared and disappeared. The man's greatest resistance to death, his book work was siphoned over. His hopes and memories, which he did not allow to disappear, remained empty except for the traces left by the experience. I don't know if this resistance was meaningless. Sometimes living in spite of death feels like a bunch of flowers with no roots to cling to, tucked into the potted soil with a package. Did the woman who lost her memories one by one have any expectations while doing this? Nevertheless, it is possible to attribute various meanings to the flower, although many of them are rootless. The place of the child in such a whirlpool was one of the fifth points of the movies that burst into life. According to the director's account, in the scene where they are talking at the table, the man and his son are told to warn the boy whose car hit each other, and then the boy will stop. But the director states that he also met with Kiki and told him to continue even if they said stop. In the midst of all this disintegration, oblivion, and disappearance, Kiki's uneasy state of looking into her father's and grandfather's eyes unsettled by what might happen, astonishing the adults there who didn't know what to do, and yet continuing to bang their cars on the table and each other was so immediate and lifelike that one could watch in silence. He wanted it so. He was there at that moment. It didn't matter that much to remember. So he had to worry about forgetting. How can forgetting, separation, annihilation enter his world? He took care of their cars and his parents should have a house. Where else would they go? Finally, the most sought after thing in this movie and the agony of absence was love. My mind goes to a verse from Ismatuzas Munajat poem. However, love is an excuse for life. What else should it be? Maybe that's why the movie makes us sick. The vertex vertex could evolve to a different place if there is a compensation for the countless cracks and fragmentation hidden not only between individuals but also within each of us, if there is an excuse for life.
It wasn't surprise that a movie that started with the dedication of to anyone whose brain will grow before they heart was unspeakable. Also, no doesn't handle transgressive art like his other films. He somehow stays on the line where Haneki says, I make films that no one can watch easily and comfortably. And obviously he doesn't have a filmography that he wants to end this line with. We start with a flowery prologue, but our not being easily fooled is reminded by dream quotes from Paul. Throughout the film, many other things are mentioned, such as a morality, contrast, the illusion of relationships. We build our whole lives to be able to bind them and prevent them from wandering. In fact, we didn't see more than a woman whose mind we questioned and a man whose heart we questioned as we progressed. The double screen technique was created exquisitely, taking into account that where one phase in concentrated, the other is settled. He also indicated the imaginary, the disconnected, but also as a strange and imminent unity, rather than creating a continuity, the fluidity of time, its intersection with each other and the overlapping of different frames were taken into consideration. I watched the movie, especially pitting the woman who created refusal to remember by reversing the frames. I think it's the strongest scene, f- focusing on the man who didn't comprise his rudeness expect for a few moments when he held her hand and looking out for Kiki the most. I loved Kiki. In the topography of agony, every moment he is gasp, even just to look at, actually his existence. How real, how delicious, with angry eyes in the middle of a serious conversation, and the cars that are constantly crashing in front of adults, telling him what to do, the way he looks at the plants on the balcony with his grandmother, and at the end the perspective of, did my grandparents have a new house now? Children to prove us that most of the things we chase after a delusion. Ahmed Luchai was right when he said, I can't think of a movie without children. So does Kaspar know while putting Kiki in the movie. While reading the shooting states of the film, I learned that the vast majority of it progressed with improvisation. The sterility of dialogue in some places can be attributed to this choice. I read that Gaspar attempted to make such a movie after suffering from cerebral hemorrhage and that he actually put himself in the movie as Kiki, while his mother and grandmother were suffering from dementia. The clutter in the film can be interpreted as the director's effort to convey the feeling of life directly. Finally, the promise of Vortex 2, which will be built on Kiki's adulthood, has been given. Considering Gaspar's heady narrative for us, I look forward to it. film draws attention primarily for its cinematography. Mortality and immortality, life and the meaning of life, human memory, remembering and forgetting, whether people understand each other or not, communication non-communication issues appear as different conceptual content gaps that can be extracted from the imagery of the film from different aspects. Of course, the main point is the issue of mortality. It is a wonderful film that will show us the imagination of people thinking about death. 
First of all, in a situation where an old woman and an old man are married, in which positions and situations they come to each other from the past to the present, and in those places, in the rooms, sometimes in the eyes, sometimes in the various states of consciousness dementia that occurs in diseases or in memory loss and understandably, it is always an introduction to death. This state of going to death is also revealed to us in a cinematographically two-screen movie, in a way that can be understood as the perspective of death and life. Of course, this can also be understood as a miscommunication perspective. Or it can be read as the isolation of people towards the moment when they will die alone. Because of that, the transformation of individuals into a cinema shooting in their own perspective is a very good example of the integration of the content and form of the film in this sense. If such a meaning can be deduced, of course it seems so. The film does not interfere with the open-ended concept. In this respect, at this point, it already owes its artisticity to those cinematographic innovations. You know, it has not been tried before, in the form of two screens from the beginning to the end, in the form of the integration of two screens, with a black line in the middle, and then in two different shots and then montage it as a movie. It may also imply a view from above. This is an interesting cinematography. On the other hand, there is nothing inhuman in the film. In other words, everything is proceeding as usual and in an ordinary way. This, for example, is the upper stage of that perspective, maybe if we think of it as a dimension, not the fourth dimension which is time the fifth dimension, that is, a dimension that looks at place and characters in time from their own perspectives, rather than looking at them in a fragmented way, the film also extends to a content with this formality. Perhaps the director's single montage point of view over two shots can also have meaning in such a cinematography. Even though it does not impose such meanings, if we think about it more in terms of this film, the issue of individuals living alone in the same house is also emphasized, since we tend to interpret the meaning that emerges in the image in the imaginary, rather than what the director attributes to it. On the one hand, death is a kind of death intertwined with life and mortality, which we see in the last death of the characters, first of the man and then of the woman. The appearance of a blue screen, the blurring of the image into a blue screen, transforming into a kind of mental, evolving from material to mental, and then, without any direct emphasis, into the meaning of the unknown, or perhaps changeable according to this point of view. There are tragic comics in the movie, such as the old woman's inability to heal herself, who is a psychiatrist, or the fact that all the writings of the old man, who is a writer, towards death, are siphoned away by her husband. This shows that tragic comics and the consistent meaning of life dash, besides death and going towards death, human fictions and practices also turn into a footnote leading to tragic death in the face of death. The film is a work of art in every way and a cult film. On Vortex by Gasparno. Contradictions such as the psychiatrist woman's incurable mental illness the old man's love for his wife and the fact that he is cheating on her despite caring for her are good examples of tragicomic events that can happen in the monotony of life. Even though they live in the same house, seeing our couple from different angles with a split screen, always dealing up with each other things and not being able to keep up with each other even in a cramped apartment, we will see the final point reached by individual and the individual relations in the modern society. When a woman said she wanted to die, her husband said to her, You are living, talking, moving forward. You have a past to share. And that shows us people built themselves with their experience and explains why the old woman always looks around with empty and lost eyes. In the movie, an elderly couple having middle-aged sons and small children shows the stages of life. From a happy childhood that doesn't know anything enough to think that the grave with the ashes is a new home, to drug addiction and tiredness with life and middle age of living for others, and then old age at the bottom of slope. As mentioned in the afterlife, a society thrives only when old men start planting trees that they know will not sit in their shade. I think the director's pessimism about the future shows that shows that 
the old man is still trying to finish his book despite knowing that he's in the last days of his life, but his wife throws the book into the toilet. After the old man died, we see the woman pouring the, her medicines into the toilet, then trying to get out of her house by taking the last thing left from her past, the photographs. When her neighbor doesn't allow, she, the woman goes to bed and pulls the cover over her head, and we see that she's dead. The woman has nothing left about him other than her, memory, her memories and she loses them too because there is no reason to live, perhaps because she is no longer alive, she simply dies without a cause. In general, the vortex film The Dame of Old Age and Death draws attention with both its cinematography and the concepts it discusses. The director makes us experience old age and loneliness simultaneously by immersing each moment from two different perspectives of the couple living in the same house. The old couple's miscommunication, stagnation and crashing silence in the same house are quite pessimistic, blurred, Cetacean with no clear casualty creates a and messy atmosphere. You are preparing yourself for inevitable and off life from the beginning to end to the movie, especially with the talking on the morning coming from the radio. With the old woman's Alzheimer's the mind consequences the pa past are erased and she even closes the frames as she is dispersed by her memories. On the other hand, the place where books, posters, paintings and many more are being together creates a contrast. Death begins before physical death. The imaginary created by film slowly prepares for real death and complicated like a symbol end of process. In editation, it is possible to see every part of lead parable example used by Jung in the expression of life on the characters. The Kiki at the escation, the man who lost the prime of his yacht at the top, and the elders at the bottom of the crew. The director's name is very dangerous for me because where are the goofy scenes, blood, and brutality by Gaspar No. Despite its name, Vortex is an emotionally charged dramatic film at the very center. His directing is definitely different from his other films and doesn't seem to bear the signature of his director. A film about the old age, aging process, and related disorders of the couple living in a small house in Paris. Our male character is writing a book on dreams, subconscious, and cinema that he may never be able to finish. The house is full of books. His wife is also a former psychiatrist. One's heart problems and the other's dementia-related problems are increasing day by day. Their only child is not in a position to help them, and he is in need of help. Despite all this, I was impressed by the fact that the son listened his parents' aging process and the problems they experienced with great cold blood and tried to find a solution. There were no dramatic scenes that we are familiar with in our society. This reveals the difference between Eastern societies and European society. Again, the way they meet death allows us to see the difference between societies. Although the split-screen view throughout the movie made me tired, it is quite successful in terms of experimental film and in terms of looking at people from different perspectives. Finally, I can say that although it is very similar to Michael Hankey's movie Amour, this movie by Gaspar No is much more striking and imp Slow progress on the road to death. The moments of the existing mind, the loss of consciousness, and the extinction from life may be nothing. The central issue is mortality in this film as in all life activities. It is obvious that we cannot make the consciousness that visualizes concepts and that appear in all areas of life experience that. Although that is the most peculiar possibility of existence or only relationship with that is the death of other day deaths. 
And in this movie, we watched the old couple go to their deaths. We watched them walk the deaths with dementia brought on by old age, lack of communication and social relations. The director does not walk through the society of deaths or does not create an emotional atmosphere with an air of mourning. It offers us the usual flow in all its simplicity. It makes you think with very open-ended concepts. We watched the movie from two different plants on a screen divided into two. However, the plants have such a totality that it does not make it difficult to follow. The movie had really interesting cinematography. Maybe, maybe they were different perspectives for people who were strangers to each other even so they lived together. I don't know how far I can take the review at the, at this point, but it was an interesting and striking film in every way.